was the fastest 10 minutes today, right? <laughs> Good to see you. Um, I appreciate what Peter had to say earlier about Rockwell outmarketing Cutler Eaton uh, and uh, and it, it's because at one point in my career, and I'm pretty sure it corresponds to Peter's time at Eaton Cutler Hammer, I was at Rockwell. And so if they outstoried you, I, I apologize for that right now. But talking of stories, I've written three books on the area of marketing and sales messaging. And I am not going to go through the exercise of humiliating myself right now and asking how many of you have read my books. Um, what I'm going to do instead is ask, has anybody read this guy's books? Recognize him? Who is that? Malcolm. Malcolm Gladwell. So shout out one of the books you might have read from him. Outliers. Outliers. Okay. Blink, I heard. Tipping Point. That's the one I was looking for. I had to wait till I got it. The tipping point was ironically the tipping point of Malcolm Gladwell's career. He was a guy who has now sold millions and millions of copies of his books. In fact, that book sold millions of copies. He made millions of dollars. It was translated in 32 languages. He now gets $150,000 for a one-hour speaking engagement. That's why you got me. <laughs> and, and what most people don't know is that Malcolm Gladwell was not the original idea person behind the tipping point. The tipping point was conceived of, developed, researched, proven, published, and named the freaking tipping point by this guy, Morton Grodzins. God bless him, that is his name. 40 years before Malcolm Gladwell's book, Malcolm Gladwell sold us all a 40-year-old unoriginal idea. And I started to think about this for a second. How does that happen? This guy had first mover advantage. He was the innovator, the leader, yet he toiled and died in academic obscurity. He's so obscure, and I've told this story so often, sometimes when you Google him, my picture shows up. <laughs> That's how pathetic this guy is. And what I, I started to think, well, you know what, really, the tipping point is like a product. They both had access to it. One had a first mover advantage, but the other guy got famous on it. He went on then to write five more books. His latest book is David and Goliath. He's now ripping off God. <laughs> but what, 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 the question is, what made the difference? So I have spent an entire career now studying what makes the difference between winners and losers when it comes to more or less parity or commoditized products. And I would argue Malcolm Gladwell, Morton Grodson's story tells it all. Gladwell had a better message. Hence the discussion that Peter and I just had, right? At some point in a market where things are more or less the same, and I heard somebody ask, what happens if you're not the best in a category? Gladwell had a 40, you know, he was talking about a 40-year-old unoriginal idea, yet he convinced all of us he was the father of it. It can be done if you tell a better story, and I believe the best story wins. So my entire career is predicated on telling a better story in the market. And I work with marketers and salespeople to develop stories based on science. So the science comes from some data that I've got. So let's imagine now that a prospect engages with you. They've responded to something you've done. You've, they've read your ad in control engineering and they've responded because that's what readers do when they see your ads in control engineering. All right, Jim, that's just, that was one for you, yeah. 